Now it's rigs and techniques too. It, yeah. It can hey, be rigs and techniques. Whatever, whatever works. Off the deep end, whatever we want to call it. <laughs> but we're talking about trout. Talking about trout, man. And Love the trout. Finally, something that I know something about. Yeah. yeah. I got to do a lot of trout wading, you know, when I was a kid. I, we never had a boat, but I did a lot of shoeing, you know, lost a lot of shoes in the banana, bottom of the Banana River. And uh, what's so great about trout is that if you're just a little ba a bass fella and you come over to the ocean, you can catch a trout on you your can gear. Catch you know, you don't have to have, you know, they don't pull real hard. You know, you catch a big 10 pounder plus, it's going to pull pretty hard right. on you. But most trout you catch are going to be in the range of 12 to probably 18 inches. You start getting bigger ones than that, then you're really doing good. And, and, that, and that's another thing you got to remember. If you're catching a lot of little trout in some spot, that's all you're probably going to be big catching ones not, there. Yeah, big ones not there. Big ones and little ones don't mingle with trout. No. Usually when you want to catch a great big gator trout, you got to go early in the morning and you got to fish in real shallow water. Because those big trout, those big gator trout, as we like to call them, they like to lay up real close to the shore and eat those little uh, minnows and, and mullets and stuff that are running right along the shore early in the morning. And usually what, how we plan our day is we target trout in the morning and redfish later in the day as right. it warms up because the sun comes up higher and we can see them better. And You're absolutely right. We catch most of our big trout up where I'm at in shallow water. And They're up there shallow. What's good about trout is they eat a wide variety of stuff. They'll There's, eat all anything that's on here. We got, uh, this table is full of everything that comes out of my tackle box. And we, we talked earlier a little bit about uh, a shrimp under a popping cork. And Works if, everywhere. And if you want to have fun with your kids and you find a little concentration of small trout, you can work them over with this kind of setup. Oh, yeah. It doesn't have to be a, a shrimp like this either. It can be just a, a jig head with a tout on it, like this little Joe sometimes. Or if you have real real shrimp, you know, if you have just regular real shrimp, you can use those. We too. use mud minnows under the uh, by us, a lot of mud minnows. Pilchards, today I was out catching pilchards on, on, a, on a dock. If you can bring out a sabiki rig and catch you a bunch of pilchards, you're gonna crush them. Um, I personally, I'm usually throwing only two things though when I'm really, Three things, three things I go through. And I go through a progression. I usually, I usually start with a chug bug early in the morning because I love to throw the chug bug. It's a, it's a narrow bait. Trout of all sizes will eat it from, from little tiny guys to great big ones will eat it. Anybody can use that. And, easy to use. And it's really easy. Even you can use it. Even right? I can do it <laughs> because you hit it one time and you just let it sit. Right. And you hit it one time and you just let it sit. They hit it when it sits a lot of times. And that's exactly, you don't want, you really don't want to move it at all once you pop it and just let it sit it, let it sit. Don't want to reel it any at all. What you do is you want to pull it until it gets just get tight and then pop it again and then reel the slack. And just, it's, it's deadly. Deadly, deadly on deadly. the roll. And, and then I also like a Mirodeen. Um, I, this is the I, little bigger version, right? This is a little bigger version. This is the XL, I guess. But uh, a Miradine or, you know, even the Rapala little twitching minnow. We've been doing well, really well with anything that Anything that yeah. looks like a little tiny white bait is going to be great. And I like these little hard baits because I can work them real fast and cover a lot of ground. And because I don't like to pole, I'm really, you know, I usually go around in a circle instead of where I want to <laughs> go. I like to drift across the flat. And I, and I was talking to this old fellow who actually started making the old trout boats, the commercial trout boats over there in the Indian River. And I asked him, I said, well, where do you, you know, where do you go fishing? And he goes, well, the first thing I do is I try to go fishing where there's nobody else fishing. Trout are, trout, big trout can be real spooky. Big trout are very spooky. And if you're, if you're, there's a lot of boat traffic or you see a lot of guys fishing there, that's the place to avoid. Yeah. You know, you wanna, you wanna go out and find your own, own land. And you know, good thing about that is you can cast it a mile, a mile. It's These like things, a bullet. Yeah, these things will cast a long, long ways, and you know, and you can work them over a lot of territory. And because a trout, his main feeding uh, modus operandi is he'll sit down in the pothole on the on the flat, and as soon as that thing gets in his view, he comes up and nails it. Yeah, and that's his ambush. So these are really great for that. Now the third thing I use is a swim bait because it's weedless. And in the Indian River and the Banana River where I live, Gotta there's be tons of weeds and, and uh, ferns and all kinds of grass in there. And if you're throwing something with the hook exposed, you're going to be spending all day messing with it. This, I mean, that bait, I've this is, this so is many your, trout on this that. This is your 
your setup, right? Yeah, this I mean, this, this thing hook. right here, I mean, especially down by you guys, you know, you hop it through that thick grass and that pothole, let it sink in the pothole. Right. I mean, I've caught so many trout on something just like that. And I, I just heard from my fellas, you know, my buddy Tony Huerta, and I've always thought this when I was rigging these things, you know, uh, he has started just threading the end of it on there like a banjo minnow. And he says, man, I've been getting tons of bites. I've been catching the fish. Instead of worrying about, you know, making sure everything's perfectly straight. Probably I wiggles just, a lot. He says it, it, it wiggles like crazy and he gets tons of bite and catches tons of fish on it. Yeah, so, you know, if you're, if, you're in a, if you're in a position where you don't know how to put these things on that great, go ahead and just <laughs> put I it mean, through sideways. I mean, that's how we rig live baits, right? We rig, I, I do ballyhoos kind of like yep. this with the X on the head. Yep. And if that, if that thing's swimming and jiggling through there, the trout is not going to know the difference. We give all fish way too much credit for what <laughs> right. they're thinking, you know. Right. They're, they're not really thinking. Fish don't think, they just react. Trout so, like to react. And trout are reacting they like are. anything. So there you go. Well, thanks. No nice worries, day. man.